Good afternoon, Dave. Good afternoon. I'm back. The video, the last, well, the last video, videos have been doing really, really well. And you were on holiday last time I was I here. I was, yes. I, I am allowed to go now and again. So I understand you've got some nice bits you're going to show us. So what can you share? I've managed to secure, at great personal cost, uh, a one owner uh, Beatles stroke Rolling Stones but more importantly, a collection of Apple records, which was, um, as people, or most people would know, was the uh, Beatles' own label, which they named Apple Records. Um, so today I'm gonna to show you a selection of uh, rare Apple records. Now the first record I'm going to show you is a legendary record. This record is by a guy who went under the name of Brute Force. It's on the Apple label. If you put it with the pie label, you can eat it. Thank you. Apple pie. Well, it's, it's all right. We can, we can edit that. Uh, sorry about that. Right, right. So it's a. Uh, this record never got a general release. Brute Force? Yes. It was an American guy that the... Um, uh, when the Beatles first started their label, they invited people to... Um, they invited people to, you know, artists and that, to send stuff in, tape-wise and that. Well, this guy sent this tape in. And um, the parent company, EMI, wouldn't touch it. And I'll come on to why in a minute. Uh, George Harrison and John Lennon actually liked the record, uh, being, um, how can I put it, slightly anti-establishment. They thought, oh yeah, let's put this out for a laugh, or for whatever reasons known to themselves. So, Is it, is it terrible then? Well, I'm going to come on to that. This record is by a guy who goes under the name of Brute Force, and the name of the song is King of Far. Right. Right, the way the lyrics go something similar to this. I am the king of far, I am the far king. Oh no. And it goes on for about three minutes with a play on words. I am the king of far, I am the far king. So for three minutes he's banging on, uh, I mean there's other lyrics involved, but it, the, 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 the end line to any verse is invariably, I am the far king. Now, when Apple first proposed to uh, release this, EMI, the parent company, wouldn't touch it. They would not touch it. Lennon and Harrison felt, well, we're, we're just going to go ahead and print it. So they, print, they, they released it without EMI's permission. But bizarrely, not only did they give it a catalogue number, they printed it on a, a bona fide Apple label. They only printed up really for personal use. So there was literally only a handful ever pressed up. Uh, estimates vary anything from 50 to 100. So um, it is as rare as the proverbial rocking horse. I say the collection I bought it off, bizarrely, you had two copies, bizarrely. Uh, this is incredibly rare record. It's one of the holy grails of collecting, particularly with Beatles collectors. A lot of Beatles collectors have never seen a copy. Well, I've got this, uh, because I bought it at a fairly competitive rate, um, I'm offering this at the bargain price on. of two and a half bells. Two and a half grand. And you've got, what, what's all this lot here? Well, this is this from the same collection. This is from the same collection. This is almost effectively, <laughs> not from there, but Let's, let's stop there. Right, this no, it stops there, it stops there basically. So this bit there and that bit there 
are effectively the whole Apple catalog. Uh, he had he, the guy I bought here. He, he only had a couple, couple of emissions in the whole cat. They only went to forty nine singles anyway. The Apple catalog. So you bought the entire collection of this guy? I, I bought I bought the entire collection. It was something in the region of like two hundred Stones albums, about five hundred Beatles albums, and all these Apple singles. Oh, and and, and Beatles uh, seven inches and. Uh, what else have we got here? You've got some other well, nice stuff here. Yeah, this is this is this is another particular rarity. This came out on Apple, obviously, but bizarrely, it's a 10-inch record. And it plays at a 78. 78? Plays at a 78 RPM. Most most equipment wouldn't have that nowadays, would well, it? Uh, even back when it was released, when it was released, when it was 71, 72, 72, when it got released in 72, probably a lot of play record players even in them days weren't playing 78s. This was basically a promotional tool. That's what it was really. It was used for promotional purposes. Uh, so once again, very small numbers got, got done. Um, it was by a band called the Sundown Playboys. Coming back to what I said earlier on about the Beatles trying to attract, attract uh, new artists, and these were from uh, the southern states of America, and they've been going a few years. They have been going a few years, and this is what's called Cajun music. This is Cajun, and it's really good actually. It's a really good up tempo uh, song. Um, you got a white album there, so what's that? Yeah, I'm going to come on to that. I'm just going to show, just going to show you the. Um, Right, so that, that's what it came out as in a seven inch record. So that's a bulk standard seven inch issue. But for some bizarre reason, they, they issued that solely for promotional purposes. Um, I don't know how many, how many copies they, they uh, pressed up, but there would barely would have been a hundred, I should think of them. 650 you got on that one? Yeah, that's 650. And the single is well. This this the single is 35. thirty five quid. But well, once again, yeah, they're, they're, they're not easy to find. They're not easy to find. Right, the last thing I'm going to show you is the white album. Right now, the thing about the white album is it's sold by the bucket. Right, it's sold by sold probably sold upwards of three four million copies. But the cachet nowadays is buying, because when they got issued, they all, most of them came with a number. Most of them came with a number. And the cachet, oh, sorry, I'm going to have to stop here. Are you right there, sweetheart? I know it's really embarrassing, but can I get that? Oh, gee, it's a stunning pop. The Beatles released 22 singles in the UK, but they were so popular that at one point, the record company did not need to pre-promote the singles. Now these records here are what's called advanced promotion copies. So at the 22 singles, they issued, I think it was 11, as an advanced promotion copy. Right, we've now, we've now come out because of the noise. The last thing I want to show you now on the Apple label is another controversial record that got pulled almost immediately of release. Right, this was a record by a band called White Trash. Long before the advent of political correctness, they took it, EMI took exception to the name of the band. So although a few records did get out with the label as White Trash, it quick, this record quickly got withdrawn and it got reissued almost immediately and the name on the label was in just trash. So, so this is a really rare... This, is, this, this got pulled almost immediately and um, once again, uh, not too many copies got out. So, which is, as a consequence, it's quite a rare record. So how much are you selling that for? Well, it's probably about 200 quid, all right? It'd be about 200 pound. And let's have a look at the other side. 
but as I say, bear, bearing in mind that I've been dealing with Beatles for 40 years, uh, I've had very few of these copies, so that's, that's how rare it is. Well, listen, it's another great video, very hot day, and I uh, look forward to seeing you at the next one, which I think is Sunday 26th of November. Yes, thank you very much indeed. I'll see you then. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.